Let's get out of this bug infested joint. Good morning guys, Anthony 4 Before Adventures. We're just leaving Fry's Hut camp area and it was a bug infested so joint. We had, uh, we're just heading out of Fry's. There was uh, flying around, what were they? The, um, the hatch of the termites. We had termites. We had other little bugs. What do we have? We had a few mozzies. There was definitely a few mozzies. Got a little bit itchy a couple of times. Um, I can't remember what else there was. There was beetles and all sorts of things, right? God bless all the bugs and the beetles, but you know what? <laughs> They're a pain, you know? They're just annoying. So, out of fries we go. This is our last installment on this trip. We're going to head back to... We've got a, I've got a little route that we're going to do that's going to take a couple of hours that I remember. I did it the other way last time, and it was a really awesome little run up and down some hills, and it was, it was freshly graded, so it was really loose, and there was quite a bit of wheel spin going on, and there was people in our group on typical high country up and down hills that hey guess what not only were they spinning wheels they were sort of going backwards so we're going to get back to there i'll let you know where it is so at the moment we're headed back to sheep yard we're going to cross the bridge and start heading up like we're heading back out to mansfield back to the main road but we're not we're going to uh change the route and i'll let you know the details once we get there for now we're cruising so just when i started this video i had one of the guys ask a question and whenever there's a question it means there's heaps of other people thinking the same question or some people have asked the question and we've got a massive uh you know area on social media all these groups and pages and youtube channels so i don't always see every question and whatever you know unfortunately my full-time job isn't to sit there and do that so you know i, I put in probably unfortunately to say at least at least half an hour to probably an hour or more every day um, some days more, some days less, of course, but an average of at least an hour a day, I'd say, is probably more accurate. But but I'm on there providing information, right? Um, and just checking, quickly checking to see if there is anything, you know, obviously, notifications if I'm uh, tagged in those for a few questions that I might be able to help with. But obviously, you don't see them all, because if you've got heaps of people asking questions, there's just going to be hundreds. and. You, know, you just I can't sit there and just keep hitting the bell going through the notifications for for hours so i hope you understand that that's why i watch the videos because all the information is in the videos like right now i'm going to answer a question that's off topic to this little drive but it's going to be completely relevant to everybody watching this video still now waiting for the next installment and it's kind of on the mechanical side a bit so you might not have seen it on 4 before diesel for some people don't know we've got two youtube channels one 4 before diesel for the vehicle information it doesn't have to be a full before a diesel but that's predominantly what we work on and use so that's what we called it but you know we could call it full before automotive anyway everybody should be on there because it's the best accurate honest unpaid information you can get just like here now it's to do with low range so in the morning you may have found doesn't matter which vehicle whose vehicle but look obviously we're talking Prado specifically here but it's going to happen with other vehicles as well when you on a cold morning and you select low range as soon as you start the car you may get a little crunch uh, it's completely standard obviously once that you've been running for probably at least 10 minutes maybe longer depending on the climate and all your oils warmed up a bit in the transfer case it'll probably go in cleanly which is what should normally usually happen but it doesn't always happen depending on you know if you've stopped and selected all the right put it in neutral you know you meant to have it in neutral um, the way to avoid it if it's a mechanical shift is do it with the engine off so you know if you've got a 120 prado and it's not a vx you know it's, it's mechanical it's got the lever which is cool it's reliable and all that sort of thing that's what we got here we if we want low range straight away and we switch the engine off in high range we can select low range before we start the engine that'll avoid that little going into uh going into low but if you've got a 150 it could be a bit hard I haven't tested this but you might be able to just put the key on and do the same thing because it's electronic sort of thing but I'm not sure if the engine needs to be running or not so someone can try that out or someone that's done it put it in the comments for anyone else so yep that works I'll put mine you know whatever the other thing you can do is you can think ahead a little bit but you don't want to think too hard when you're out on a trip relaxing we're just coming into sheep yard now you don't want to think too hard but you might go in the morning, do I want low range or high range? So before you switch the engine off, select with it, you know, whichever one you want. For me, I'd switch it off in high range. I didn't need low range to come out of there. But I noticed uh, one of the other vehicles 
so I don't know if he was just playing with it or which way he was going in or out. Anyway, this is sheep yard. We're gonna might as well keep rolling here for a minute. We're gonna dodge a couple of potholes. When you go through campsites, you know, you don't need to go tearing through. You're in a hurry, staring up the dust. It'd be really good if everyone could go through. Put it this way, the more people there are camping, the slower you go, right? So, you know, walking pace is a good pace for when you're going near vehicles to try and keep the dust down. And I said, it's a problem everywhere. It's not just here, right? Every bloody campsite, these big, you know, you could be up at El Cuestro, they're the worst for it. The place is a dust bowl. Just turn on left here to go across the bridge, like we said. Place is a dust bowl, the last thing you want, I mean walking pace is almost too fast, so if people can just slow down, that'd be good. Alright, we're going to head up the road here, and uh, we're going to make a left turn, I'll let you know the name of the track once we get up. You know, this is about 16 k's I think, from Sheep Yard to the main road, or something like that, a bit more maybe. And it's really important that there's a lot of people going in and out here in a hurry, right? So it's really important you keep an eye for them if you've got your... Uh, if you've got your you know, lights on, it's probably a bonus. But you need to keep left, and we've talked about driving before, so I'm not gonna go on about it. So you need to be prepared to dive left through to get out of someone's way. For when they're doing the wrong thing, you need to be ready to go bush. So be aware of your driving. Don't be, uh, you know, mucking around. Tell the kids, settle down. It's a matter of safety here, you know. Don't distract me, it's really important that I watch the road. If you've got your passenger on it as well for looking for oncoming up around the bends a bit further, drive to your own capability, what speed you can, you know, drive at to know. But see, you know, you don't want to go off the edge of something, but you need to be able to be prepared. If somebody's coming around that bend hop, you know, and they're, you know, they're not going to be, I've had it plenty of times, they're in the middle, you know, like this, I'm about, the, I'm around about the middle now just to give you an idea, and that's fine, because we can see what's coming. But they, come, look, for example, they'll come around this bend here, out here in the middle, right? And they, because they're out wide and they're over the camber and they can't get back, mate. I've got to dive over in the left greenery so that we don't have a head on, literally. You know, like, you know, it's, it's up to you to avoid that situation, trust me. You're better off going a little bit into the ditch and risk getting a puncher or damage or panel damage and having a head on. So just think about that, but just slow the hell down and keep left. So keep left's the key thing here. Um, you know, there's plenty of road here, you can see, but, I think there must be a few bingles because they've got a new big red sign up so to sort of put the little safety message out there as well i've got no issues with cutting corners i'm all over that right like here i'm on the left mate here i'll go on the right because guarantee even if a vehicle came as far as i can see i'm back over here again right but here we can't see around the bend right and someone else is coming around i don't know why on the left bend they come around they should be hard in left so it's just really simple keep left keep left where we've got a problem here is where, see, so you're going around to the right. If someone hugs this round to the right, you can't see anything. So you've got to just go out wide and slow down. Why slow down? Because if they come down, and that's where you need to be able to move left. And the slower you're going, the more grip you're going to have to be able to change direction because of the momentum thing, right? So we're doing driving lessons again anyway, whatever. Okay, so we're on Howquid Track, and uh, I reckon just here on the right where it says Mount Timbertop, there's a little car park. Just here on the left is where we're going to go left. Uh, it's about almost two k's from the hairpin, you know, the tight hairpin on Alpha Track. It's about two k's on the highway side of uh, uh, that hairpin. Three chain track is where we're headed in. Right, this is just the start of going up. Three chain track, give you an idea of the conditions. It's that ready orange clay business. Like I said, it's very dry, the sun's been out. The good news about the rain that we've had recently is it washes all the dust and stuff like that off. So, and then having dry sunny days for a number of days, like at least a week, and then the sun shining, nice warm days for at least three or four days now, probably more up here. The track will be in perfect condition as far as viscosity, we'll call it. There you go, track viscosity. Oh no, which way are we going here? Good question, I don't know. I've taken to the right, I'm not sure, like I said, I only been down, last time I was on this track I went the other way, and, you know, trying to remember, that there's always these side tracks, you know, on my map, it doesn't, so it could be just to go up the top of the hill for a view, it could be a split that comes back onto this one, or perhaps I've taken the wrong track, but I stay to the right for those people that want to follow this route, but as I said, you know, typical high country stuff, you know, Put a few hills to go up and down. 
So this one is fairly steep. It's a good oh. rocky base sort of thing, so... Um, but yeah, it's a bit rough, it's a bit rocky. You could pick different lines, you could let your tires down, you could put your locker on, anything like that. Not having too many issues at the moment. You know, any steeper or any rougher. You might spin a wheel, I'm not saying we're not spinning anything, but you know. Gently as it goes, and it doesn't seem to be an issue. We've got a little bit of flex happening over that bit, so a little bit of wheel spin, but yeah, nothing too. Just cruisy, cruisy, sit back in the chair and look at this guy. I'm going to show you a bit of scenery. And the other guys come up the track. Okay, so we're up on top of a ridge. We came up, you come up and you see a solar panel up on top of that hill there. And there's a right turn to go down. We didn't go that way, we come straight along this ridge here. And we come along here and there's another turn. We're gonna turn right here to stay on three chain and go down this track here. There's also a track down there. I'm not sure if it goes through anymore. So anyway, that's down there. We're going down there. Just letting the others uh, catch up. I stopped to take a photo because, I mean, have a look at this. So this is my photo for you. Okay, we've got a bit of chit chat in the background on channel 10. You've got the girls they're on a road trip or something. A lot of chit chat on the uh, four drive channel. This one's a bit rough, eh? Look at this. Which way are we going to go? Which side of this? A few loose rocks and everything. As I said, on this track it's pretty cool. There's a lot of uh, hills up and down and rough stuff. Bit of slidage there. Right, so it's always steeper than it looks and all that. Wait till the boys come down behind me, mate. They're going to be going, mate. You know, I don't think they'll do it. They, they might do it in silence. Anyway, but uh, we'll just give you a track report on this at the end because... Um, low range first for this one. <laughs> right, so we'll give you a track report because it's one of those ones you might not want to come down. Don't, I wouldn't do this one in the wet either. There's a lot of tracks I wouldn't do in the wet unless you like wrecking tracks, winching, getting muddy, and taking risks really. Because when that winch rope breaks, and if they do break, um, yeah, it's not going to be too pretty if you haven't got traction to keep yourself from sliding down the hill. Anyway, just sort of show you a few bits of a few tracks here. Alright, just over this hill, it is very steep and deeply rutted. Just take it easy over this one, you've got a few quite deep um, dugout sections. So just pick your line a little bit, take it real slow. Try to anyway. <laughs> this is the one that, pretty sure, we have a fair bit of uh, fun coming back up, and we did last time. Key is to keep it real slow, there's a bit of a step here as well. Keep the car pointing straight down the hill at all times. And once again, the video ain't going to do any justice. You can see the roof rack over the back, you might get some comments from the other guys. story uh, if we had to come back up it would be a little bit of fun As you can see a few people have had a bit of uh, a bit of digging that's what we call slippery stuff Funny chit chat see ya Turn the squelch up, change the channel. We'll go downhill where we can't hear anyone else. Working on it. Awesome bit of track this one. Uh, what have we got over, what surprises we got over this hill? <laughs> Find it when we get there. Yeah, the boys
vehicle is in quiet concentration at the moment, I think. Most people won't be doing too much uh, chit chat while they're driving over that gear, and uh, it's usually at the end once they feel safe again. <laughs> but they say uh, they got the uh, got the blood pumping because that's what happened on one of the other hills, and this one's I feel the back started to come around there on that one. It's quite a lot of slidey happening the whole time. Awesome hill. like we're to the bottom of that section it just gets boring again maybe i'll see if i can video the other guys coming down eh? so here we are out of the car it's just flattened off just a little bit here it's still downhill all the way but uh you can see we're gonna have this we're gonna have a sun problem here let's try and get out of the sun here we go this is not the worst bit this is just a bit towards the end yeah Probably only about 30 degrees, might go a pinch over in places depending on what line you pick and what hole you're falling into. He was commenting he's loving these BF... This is the KO2 country, this is what the BFG KO2s are for. Right, they're okay on the road, they're really good out here for grip and reliability and the outback. He's, that's the easy part now. <laughs> I did though, you're running me toes again. He goes, you get that. <laughs> uh, there you go, he's down. It's all good, I'm sure they'll be loving it. I just said, it. I think it's gonna get steep again. So we're just having a bit of a look around before we head down. Just thought I'd stop for this uh, brown snake. Let him keep moving off the track. Go on, mate, keep going. Mate, this is a four wheel drive, mate. This is a four wheel drive. Keep moving, otherwise you'll get run over. Come on, keep it moving, mate. That way, go on. There you go, guys. That's what you don't want to get bitten by. He's just frozen in motion. That's why I stopped. I'm like, hang on, why's he stopped? Normally they keep moving. Keep moving, mate. I'm ready to move, don't you worry. I'll get in the car and put the window up and lock the door. I'm still five metres away, guys, so don't you worry about that. Come on, mate, let's go. So we've just come down three chain track to an intersection and we're going left onto Dungeon Gully track. That's this away. This is one of those ones I was explaining in another video. See this, when it gets wet, it's really slippery clay and you've got the conservation mound and they've made it so the water runs off, but if it's slippery, you come around here and you can see what's happened to other people. They slide and end up down in there and you can't get out because your winch is on the front, right? So there's ways to get out of course but um it can be very difficult especially if you're six eight inches deep or down to your axles and you can see where other people ended up in here so you don't come down this track in the wet either 
Oh, this one's got a few little wheel spin marks, one of the uphill ones, all mogled up. So I was just going to try and find a better line for the guys and show them the way over it to see if it works meters, out though. Like. Turn left. No, lock it straight over it, no problem. Like that. Happy days. We just came down there and we're down at the Hapwa River. Have a look at this, eh? Beautiful spot. So when you get down towards the bottom, you've got an option. You can go left and you go up over a big hill. That's back there. Or you can go to the right and it just continues on similar to what it was. I'll take you over here and show you this river and then we'll uh, call it a video because that's it for the day. We're gonna maybe go for a swim here and we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna pump the tires up and then we're gonna head off to the bakery at Yark and get a pipe at lunch and then pick up the kids from school because it's back to reality. Have a look at this. That's one of the good camp spots over there where they are, obviously. A fair bit of water coming through the river at the moment. A little bit more than usual. There's a nice deep hole in here. It's, the rain's cleared it all out quite often. There's some sticks and stuff in here, but you can see the big log still there. Have a look at this. Mate, what's the matter with people? We'll fix it up. Look at this. And for those that, uh, you know, hung around to the end, you get to see the pot of gold at the end of the video. So you got all that information. You got all the scenery, the track conditions. The track was, I'll rate it difficult. It's not very difficult. It was drivable. There's a lot of sliding. If we went the other way, we could have quite possibly uh, run into a bit of trouble. There's going to be fish in this river too, 100%. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked it. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn the bell on. We're at Running Creek, is the campsite. Uh, just the other side of the crossing over there. Bloody beautiful spot here. See ya.